Hello Grade 11s and welcome to this lesson on completing the square. We complete the square to change between the equation in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c to y equals a open brackets x plus p close brackets all squared plus q. Let's join Reno as he revises the skill. Say we have the formula y is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 5. We would like to write it in the form y is equal to a x minus p squared plus q. But we cannot even factorize the quadratic expression into two identical brackets or a perfect square. So let's fix it. We won't be doing anything unlawful. We'll just be using the properties of equations. We focus on the quadratic expression y is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 5. The number causing the problem is minus 5. We need an appropriate number there that will allow us to find two identical brackets. Well, First, get the negative 5 out of the way, add it to both sides of the formula. So we'll have y plus 5 is equal to x squared minus 4x. And then, of course, when I add 5 to negative 5, that will fall away. What do you notice about the formulae? The formulae are still equivalent. Now, let's fix the right-hand side by adding a number that will allow us to get to identical brackets. And thereafter, we will add exactly that same amount to the left-hand side, to balance, right? Let's see what number to add. We can estimate. Will x squared minus 4x minus 4 factorize perfectly? Well, no, because you should remember that the last minus tells us that the two brackets will have different signs, and we don't want that. We want two identical brackets. Will x squared minus 4x plus 4 factorize perfectly? Let's try. So we have y plus 5 there, and here we'll write x squared minus 4x plus 4. We need two brackets. The signs will be the same, both minus. Then we factorize x squared, so we will write x in the first bracket and x in the second bracket. And lastly, we will factorize the 4 as 2 times 2. Now we have identical brackets. y plus 5, I carry down there, that's x minus 2 squared. Now if I have added 4 to the right hand side, I must add 4 to the left hand side. And then I get y plus 9 is equal to x minus 2 all squared. And when I take the 9 to the other side, in other words, subtract 9 from both sides, I get y is equal to x minus 2 all squared minus 9. So now we have the quadratic formula in the turning point form. So we can decide what the turning point is, whether the parabola has a maximum value or a minimum value, we can find the equation of the line of symmetry and we can also investigate the transformations of the parent parabola y is equal to x squared. We call this trick completing the square and the reason for this is that we have a bracket here that is squared. It's a very old trick, one that was known more than 2,000 years ago.
But completing the square can be quite complicated, so we take a shortcut by using what is known as the quadratic formula. You will get this formula on a formula sheet, but it helps to know it off by heart. This formula gives us the roots of any quadratic function. It also contains a way to calculate the coordinates of the turning point. You may have noticed that in the clip we just saw, the formula used was y equals a, open brackets, x minus p, close brackets, all squared, plus q. Remember, the standard form that you are required to use has a plus p. This form of the equation has an effect on the equation of the axes of symmetry, and thus the coordinates of the turning point. The coordinates of the turning point will be negative pq instead of positive p. And thus, the equation of the axes of symmetry will be x equals negative p. Completing the square helps with sketching quadratic functions. Be sure to try the task video at the end of this series for more practice. You'll also be able to learn more about sketching quadratic functions on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Thank you for joining us, Grade 11s. Goodbye.